Hi, today we're going to be looking at part two of mixed and entire radicals. We're going to be looking at how to write mixed radicals as entire radicals. And what we did in part one was we took a question that looked like this, where we had the square root of 45 and we wrote it as a mixed radical. So we ended up figuring out that it was 9 times 5 and we can take the square root of 9 and write it down as 3 and the square root of 5 is just going to stay as the square root of 5 because it's irrational. So what we're going to do is we're going to go from this point here and we're going to go backwards and end up at the square root of 45. So let's actually have a look at this question right here and see how we can end up going backwards. We've got 3 root 5 um, and what did we square root to end up with 3? It's what you have to think about. Well, the square root of 9 is 3 and the square root of 5 is still just the square root of 5. Okay, so we can multiply these two factors together and that ends up giving us back our square root of 45. So here we have the entire radical and this was our mixed radical. Alright, let's have a look at another example. Okay, let's have a look at writing 2 root 2, which is a mixed radical, as an entire radical. Okay, so what did we end up square rooting to get 2? Well, that's 4. So the square root of 4 is 2, that's how we end up with that 2, and then that gets multiplied by the square root of 2. So we can multiply these two factors together, end up getting 4 times 2 and our entire radical is the square root of 8. We can have a look at another example. We can do this actually same example in another way. If you have a hard time thinking, okay, what gave me 2? What square rooted gave me 2? You could think of the question this way. So we have 2 square root 2. How do I get that back underneath underneath my square root symbol? Alright. So what we're going to do, since we know that this is the square root, we want to do the opposite of that. What's the opposite of a square root? A square. So let's take that number, square it, and then multiply it by what's already under the radical here. So we end up getting the square root of 4 times 2. And that gives us the square root of 8. So we ended up at the exact same answer looking at it just slightly differently. Let's try another one. Uh, in this case we're going to actually look at the cube root situation. So we all know that for cube root is we need our perfect cubes, right? Uh, what cubed gave us 2? Okay, so we know that 8 cubed gave us 2. Don't forget to put in the index so that we know that it's cube root. And we multiply that with our cube root of 3, which is irrational, so that stays that way. Uh, we can write both of these underneath the same radical here, and that's 8 times 3. Gives us a final result of the cube root of 24. Okay, so let's have a look at it the other way. If we don't want to think, okay, what cube cube rooted gave me 2, 
I can simply do the opposite of cube root, which is cubing. So you want to keep it all under here and write 2 cubed times 3. All right. So we have 2 cubed, which is 8 times 3, and we end up at the exact same result of cube root of 24, right? So that's your entire radical there.